Let's go back to school. Let's put some greenery there. Oh, hey, I'm recording. Whoops, sorry. It's so silly of me. All right. Similar triangles that overlap. Two ways to find a missing triangle. This is the assignment number 10 notes from unit two. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a way to solve for a missing side in two triangles. But in this case, the two triangles are going to be kind of overlapping each other. And what we're going to do is we are going to find the value of X. So in the first problem here, we're going to set up the equation and I'm going to show you how to solve it. OK, now the big thing is, is that when you're doing problems such as these, you need to identify the two shapes that are going to be considered similar with one another. All right. And so the two shapes that are similar to one another and one of them's kind of hidden is you have this triangle right here which I am outlining in yellow. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to redraw that triangle. So one of the strategies that when you get a problem where you have triangles overlapping each other is, is that you, it's, it's really beneficial to just take the two shapes that you are saying are similar and then just redraw them completely separate from one another, filling in all the information that you know. So you can see in triangle J, A, E, J to A has a length of four. A to E has a parallel mark to it, but I don't know how long it is. And side E to J has a length of five, okay? And then the triangle that you are comparing it to would be, and this triangle is a little bit hidden, it's L, N, J, and then J back to L. So it's really the entire shape, which is also a triangle. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take that shape and I'm gonna redraw it, but I'm gonna draw it completely separated from triangle J, A, E. This is a very helpful strategy when you're solving for a missing side. Okay, fill in the letters that you know. So that is a J, that is an N, that is an L. And then, so this is going to be the triangle that I highlighted in blue. And then you're going to then fill in the lengths that you know. Okay, so you can see L to N is down here. And all we know is that it's parallel. So L to N is parallel with E to E to A, okay, that does not mean they're equal. That just means they're never going to touch each other, all right? J to N is four combined with two. So J to N would be four plus two, which is six. And J to L is five combined with X. So J to L would be five combined with X. So it would be five plus X. Okay, so this is the first step that you want to do when you're coming across problems where they're overlapping each other, but yet they're still similar with one another. Um, and then, so what, the, and the reason why is this is going to help you really identify what corresponds with what, so we can set up our ratios. So let's start with the um, blue triangle. And if you notice, side J to N is six. And that corresponds with side J to A in the yellow triangle. So one of the ratios that I could set up is 6 over 4. Okay. And then going back to the blue triangle, you will notice that side J to L is 5 plus X. And that corresponds with side J to E, which is 5. So another ratio that I have is 5 plus X over five, okay? Now, if you recall, and I said this in the previous um, assignments notes, is that the big picture here that we're talking about, hold on, I don't know why my page doesn't dip down like that, but the big, there we go, the big, 
No, there we don't go. The big picture is this. When shapes are similar, then their ratios are in proportion. Now, what that means is that I have these two triangles here. They are similar to one another, okay? Which means that their, their ratios, six over four is a ratio, and five plus X over five is a ratio. They are in proportion. So what that means is that they are equal to each other. So this allows me to create the proportion, six over four is equal to five plus X over five. And then we use the strategy of cross multiplying in order to solve for X, which is what I'm doing in this problem. So I'm gonna multiply the six with the five. And I'm gonna write that result down, which is 30. And then I'm gonna multiply the four with the five plus X. Okay, and now remember when you do this, when you multiply the four with the five plus X, you're going to distribute the four. So you're gonna multiply the four with the five, that is 20. And then you're gonna multiply the four with the X and that's gonna give me a 20 plus four X. And then the rule is after you cross multiply, the results are equal to each other. Okay, so I'm just gonna carry my problem over here. So I now have the equation 20 plus four X is equal to 30. And now I just use some basic algebra to solve. My first step is I'm gonna subtract 20 from both sides of the equation. The 20s would cancel out. That would leave me with a new equation of four X is equal to 10. And then I would divide 10 by four. And after those fours cancel each other out, I would get X is equal to 2.5, okay? So that would be an example of how we use um, this overlapping triangle concept, redrawing the triangles, setting up the appropriate ratios, making it a proportion and cross multiplying to solve for the missing side. Okay, let's go to another example right here. So in this example, we're going to find how much uh, the question mark is. And the question mark represents the length from side S to B. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to identify the two shapes that are similar that you're going to compare with each other. Okay, and just like in the previous example, we have two triangles that we're comparing to each other. So we have this triangle CUB, which I just highlighted in yellow, and then I'm just going to trace it in black here so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so that was a C, the bottom right was U, the top vertex is B, and then I'm going to fill in the lengths of what I know. So you can see that C to U has a length of six. U to B actually has a length, and this one's gonna be a little bit tricky. It's gonna be 12 minus whatever the question mark is, okay? So 12 minus whatever the question mark is is gonna give me the um, length of how far it is from U to B. So 12 minus question mark. And then B to C has absolutely nothing there and I have no way to figure it out. So I'm gonna to have to leave the side B to C blank. Now, the other shape that I'm comparing it to, since this is a triangle, has to be another triangle. And the other triangle is kind of the one that's hidden a little bit, but it's that, it's the entire figure right there. So I'm gonna compare that triangle with this triangle right here, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of outline it and then fill in the vertex letters and then fill in the lengths that I know, okay? So in this triangle, I've got T goes all the way to U and you can see that T all the way to U is a combination of 18 and six. So I'm going to add up the 18 and the six. That's gonna give me T to U has a length of 24. Okay, then U goes up to S, and you can see from the picture over here, U up to S has a length of 12. So we put 12 there, and S to T has nothing. So in my diagram, I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna leave that blank. Now what I do is, I'm going to pick a side from the blue triangle. 
I'm going to pick 12. And you can see, because I separated the triangles, it's super easy to see. 12 corresponds with 12 minus J. So what that does is that gives me the ratio 12 over 12 minus, I said J, sorry, it's the question mark, over 12 minus the question mark. Then I'm going to go back to the blue triangle and create another ratio, 24, because I separated the ratios. Super easy to see. It corresponds with 6. So my other ratio is 24 over 6. And then the big picture is, is that when shapes are similar, and these two shapes are similar, their ratios are in proportion. So that means I set them equal to each other. And the way that I solve, um, this is called a proportion. And the strategy that I use to solve it is I cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply the 12 with the 6. And I'm going to write that result down. So 12 multiplied with 6 is 72. And then I'm going to multiply the 24 with the 12 minus the question mark part. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 24 with 12 minus the question mark. Now, when I do this, I have to distribute. So I have to multiply the 24 with the 12. And gosh darn it, I don't know what that is. But thank goodness I have access to the Internet. So once again, when I ever have to use the Internet, I go to the Desmos.com website. I click on Scientific Calculator, and I just use that calculator. So I'm multiplying 24 with 12. And you can see over here the answer is 288. So I would get 288 minus, and now I have to multiply the 24 with the question mark, which gives me 24 question mark. Those two results are equal to each other. And what that does for me is that creates the equation 288 minus 24 question mark. And the question mark is like a variable like x is equal to 72. And I work this out to solve for what the question mark is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 288 from each side of the equation. This answer is going to seem a little bit, well, it's going to look a little bit weird, but it's going to work out. Those will cancel out. Bring down the minus 24 question mark. So now that 24 is created as, it's thought of as a negative 24. And that's going to be equal to negative 216. 72 minus 288 is negative 216. Then I divide both sides of the equation by negative 24. And that would cancel out those negative 24s. And that would give me that my question mark is equal to, now when I divide these out, remember a negative divided by a negative is going to give me a positive. So my answer is going to be positive. And then I'm just going to multiply or divide 216 divided by 24. I don't have to put the negatives in because I know the answer is going to be positive, And I get positive 9 for my answer there. Okay, so my question mark would be equal to 9. All right, so let's just quickly review what I did. So what I did in both of the problems was I was solving for a missing side. And I had overlapping triangles. And the strategy was, which is almost fail-proof, so you guys should do it, is I just redrew the two triangles out that made it very easy to see which sides corresponded with each other which allowed me to correctly write my ratios. Then I cross-multiplied, and I used algebra to solve.